Audu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahirrahmanirrahim Today we are going to talk about the second law of thermodynamics and uh, this is uh, actually the taken from the course outline of uh, thermodynamics course uh, having the course code of PHY331 In this lecture we will discuss basically the second law of thermodynamics uh, we will discuss different processes that lead to the first and second law of thermodynamics. Uh, moreover, we also need to know the nature of different processes that include the reversible and irreversible process. We will discuss the different statement of the second law of thermodynamics, uh, including the Calvin Planck statement and the Clausius statement of the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, some machines will also be discussed including the perpetual motion machine uh, and it will be discussed how we can utilize the second law of thermodynamics in different engines and machines and at the end some ideal Carnot cycle will be discussed which have efficiency of 100% and then uh, the whole lecture will be concluded uh, about remorse, regarding remorse uh, uh, about the second law of thermodynamics. So first we need to know some uh, natural processes uh, that lead to the second law of thermodynamics. If we look in, in our daily life, if we have a cup of coffee that is at higher temperature than the room temperature, then normally after keeping the cup of coffee for longer time at that environment it reduces the temperature and the heat goes from the cup of coffee towards the environment and this flow of heat continue until both achieve the same temperature in some cases we convert the mechanical work into heat uh, so transferring heat to a wire will not generate electricity so we can do that like that so these processes are actually occur. These processes are normal processes occur, but it is not actually the violation of the first law of thermodynamics. If we look toward these processes, there is a natural way in which heat transfer. Just like if we consider the cup of coffee is temperature higher than the temperature of the surrounding, so definitely heat will flow in its natural process. I mean heat will flow from the higher temperature towards the lower temperature until both the bodies achieve the same temperature. Now coming toward the one way temperature heats. So if we consider some one way processes that occurs in a certain direction and do not in the reverse direction. So what will happen? So for this purpose a process must satisfy both the first and second law of thermodynamics to proceed. So what are the major uses of second law of thermodynamics? The first one is that this second law is used to identify the direction of processes in which direction the system will move. Uh, it also describes the energy has uh, the the quant uh, assert that energy has quality as well as quantity. The first law is concerned with the quantity of energy and transformation of energy from one to another form. While no information has been given about regarding its quality, but the second law of thermodynamics provides means to determine the quality as well as the degree of degradation of energy during a process. So, moreover, the second law of thermodynamics is also used in determining the theoretical limit for the performance of the commonly engineering system, just like the engine and refrigerator as well. So this is some other thermal example from our daily life. How we have heat source and heat sinks. I mean how how the heat is produced and it transfers from one body to another body. Uh, the body which is creating heat is normally called as a thermal energy source. And the other body which is absorbing that heat is called as thermal energy sink. So a source supplies energy in the form of heat and the sink absorb that particular energy. So there are some bodies with relatively large thermal masses that can be modeled as the thermal energy reservoir. 
So say for example if you consider a relatively large thermal energy capacity that can that supply or absorb finite amount of heat without undergoing any change in the temperature is called as thermal energy reservoir or we, we can also call it a simple reservoir. So these bodies are considered to be just like a ocean, lakes, or rivers as well as the atmosphere air is also modeled as a thermal energy reservoir because of their large masses. So this is something about the heat engine and uh, how we can convert the heat into work or uh, maybe is it possible to convert the work into heat? How we can do it? So for this purpose we need to uh, consider that uh, there is some, uh, some some particular heat engine that is actually receive heat from a higher temperature source that might be solar energy, oil furnace or nuclear reactor and it convert that energy, part of that energy into work and part of that energy is wasted. So the rejected amount of energy moves to a sinks that is normally the atmospheres or the rivers or something else so that is why the systems move in a cycle we have three examples over here in the first case the work is done heat goes out the other no work is done because it's not moving so work can always be converted to heat directly and completely but the reverse is not true so here we have the example of heat engine we have a body at higher temperature source at higher temperature and a sink at low temperature so the system or the engine take heat from the higher temperature source convert for part of that heat into energy and reject the remaining amount of heat to the heat sink so this is some ideas of, about the heat engine so similarly we have some other example regarding the uh, transformation of energy where a portion of the work output of heat engine is consumed internally to maintain the continuous operation because the work or the energy that is utilized is not completely the work that is that is the work that is uh, went out but some part of that work is utilized to maintain the continuous operation of their particular systems so in this case if we see the net work will be net uh, w net out will be equal to w out minus w in where w out uh, will be equal to q, q in uh, if we consider the work in amount of heat so it is equal to q in minus q out so here in this example we can see the part of that the part of that energy will be utilized in maintaining the continuous operation of that heat and q in is the amount of heat supplied to the system in boiler from a higher temperature source similarly q out is the amount of heat rejected from a steam in condenser to a low temperature sinks and work w out is the amount of work delivered by steam as it expands in turbine and W in is the amount of heat required to compress water to boiler pressure. So this is the uh, for any particular heat engine we have some thermal efficiency. The thermal efficiency actually describes how much of the given amount of heat is converted into work. Say for example here we have two simple example. If you are providing 100 kilojoule of energy to a heat engine and it convert 20 kilojoule of energy into work and reject the amount, the uh, uh, remaining amount of energy into uh, heat sink that is actually the best heat so it, it is actually to 80 kilojoule so the efficiency of this particular engine is 20 percent so similarly if we consider some other heat engine that takes the same amount of heat from the heat source that is 100 kilojoule and convert 30 kilojoule into into work so as a result of utilizing 30 percent of this uh, 
this uh, heat the remaining 70% will be rejected to the heat sink and the efficiency of this heat engine is 30% so definitely its efficiency is reduced uh, increase so we can increase or improve the efficiency of heat engine by increasing the energy that is utilized in doing work or in other words we can do it by reducing the amount of heat sink i mean by reducing the amount of heat that is given to the sink so this is some something from that we can get the efficiency of a heat engine so thermal efficiency is actually the net net wo work output divided by total heat input so from that we can get the thermal efficiency of any particular engine so is it possible that we can save the amount of heat that is rejected to the sink is it possible so for that purpose we consider a heat engine a, a heat engine cycle cannot normally be according to the second law of thermodynamics as we will discuss the heat uh, the statement later it is not possible to complete the cycle so a heat engine cycle cannot be completed without rejecting part of that energy to a low temperature sinks so in a steam power plant the condenser is the device where large quantity of waste heat is rejected to rivers or lakes so can we just uh, take the condenser out of the plant and save all the waste energy is not possible how is not possible because the cycle will not be completed for for this particular simple reason that without a heat rejection process is not in the condenser the cycle is not completed and as a result the 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 system will not be operational anymore so every heat engine must uh waste some part of a uh, part of energy by transferring it to a low temperature sink in order to complete the cycle even if we are trying we can improve the efficiency of heat engine by reducing the amount of q out but is not possible to completely uh, vanish it so this is something lead to the second law of thermodynamics and the kelvin planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics which state that it is impossible for any device that operate in a cycle to receive heat from a single reservoir and produce a net amount of work so no heat is possible no heat engine is is uh, reported till yet which have, which is 100% efficient by 100% efficiency we means the total that the total amount of heat given to the engine is completely converted into work so this is something provided by the second law of thermodynamics so if we do just like in this example if we have a heat engine that that takes the heat and the amount of heat q q h of 100 kw from the from the heat source and convert completely into work so this is something the violation of the kelvin planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics and as we discussed in the earlier slide the cycle will not be completed and the uh, the the engine will not be operational so the in the same way we have refrigerator and heat pump refrigerator is also used to extract the heat from the cold body but is not possible to extract the heat uh, a, without 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 um, using some work normally we saw in the first slide of this lecture that it is normal that heat flow from a hot body toward a cold body and this is the natural way of flowing heat but in and this is a unidirectional transfer of heat a body a heat from a body at higher temperature will move to a body at lower temperature when they both the bodies are brought in thermal contact with each other but if we do it in the opposite direction what we will do is not possible to extract the heat from a cold body toward a hot body if you want to do it we need to utilize some work for this purpose 
so actually the heat transfer of heat from a low temperature medium to a high temperature medium requires some special device that is called as refrigerator and the liquid that is used in this particular system is called as refrigerator so in normal refrigerator the freezer compartment where the heat is absorbed by the refrigerator serves so, so as a evaporator and the car is usually behind the refrigerator where the heat is dissipated to the kitchen air serves as a condenser of that particular system so from that we can also get the coefficient of performance of that particular system that is represented by cop coefficient of performance also shows the efficiency of the heat engine that is it possible that how much how much heat we can extract from the cold body and the coefficient of performance is equal to the desired output divided by the required input and from that we can get the coefficient of a part, uh, performance of a particular system so we here we have some example of heat pumps where where we can use we can where we can use some uh, uh, source or some work to pump the heat so that is also like a refrigerator where we can extract heat from the cold body so we have some some example of the uh, second law of thermodynamics and that lead to the uh, another statement of the second law of thermodynamics which is called as a clash statement of the second law of thermodynamics and that states that it is impossible to construct a device that operate in a cycle and produce no effect other than transferring heat from a lower temperature body toward a higher temperature body so this is the second statement of the second law of thermodynamics and this generally provide the idea that the refrigerator cannot operate unless its compressor is driven by an external power source normally we use an electric source for this purpose so this is some something uh, that lead to the second uh, statement of the second law of thermodynamics so if we look towards both statement both statement of the second law of thermodynamics are equivalent to each other and we can also prove it by considering one of the statement wrong if we consider one of the statement wrong definitely the other statement would also gives us a, uh, that will also leads to a wrong value so and for that we can we can consider that both the statements are equivalent so for that purpose we can also consider that it is also possible to take a heat from a cold body toward the hot body without any expense of work so and in other word that will lead to the conclusion that we can construct a heat engine that takes the whole amount of heat into work without rejecting any amount of heat so both will lead to the uh, different uh, uh, the both will lead to the violation of the statement and that is why the proof for that the violation of kelvin constant will lead to the violation of the clashes stack the st violation of the clashes st statement Uh, describe that both the statements are equivalent to each other so kelvin planck and clash statement are equivalent in their consequences and either statement can be used as the expression for the second law of thermodynamics so we have some petroleum pet, per perpetual motion machines that can used to uh, uh, for, for for any particular purposes and that consider the, the that have the different portion just like that is actually the part of the normal uh, engine just like we have boiler and condenser and the, that particular parts are used in that motion so describing the second law of thermodynamics we also need to describe the reversible and irreversible processes the natural processes all are irreversible processes because part of the energy will be wasted reversible process is actually the idea of is actually an ideal process where we can take the system from one point and bring the same systems into that particular point after completing the cycle 
but in reality all processes are irreversible because some energy will be utilized and if you want to consider some re reversible processes and we want to model that particular process because it is also useful in this uh, uh, description and there are some points which are necessary to for the description of reversible process because it is very easy complete comparatively easy to analyze and that is actually serve as the idealized model for any particular systems so that is actually the uh, reversible process so the idea of irreversibility is uh, definitely there and uh, all the natural processes what we are performing are irreversible processes so in some cases we can keep the process reversible at the cost of environment so in that case it's the energy is provided to the environment but if we consider the whole place as a a system again that particular process is not reversible but anyhow uh, at in case of uh, irreversible process some, so, some sort of heat will be wasted so we have some Carnot cycle that that is based on the reversible processes and that is a system or that is a ideal engine for which it is considered to be sufficiency is 100% and that stepwise description of this particular system is based on the ideal process uh, I, that, that is based on the reversible processes so if we consider that particular system so it is assumed that this start, um, starting from a particular point 1 and bringing the system through the point 2, 3 and 4 and again bringing to the system 1 the energy of this particular system will be constant and the system will also perform this operation so we have th this is some simple example about the uh, Carnot cycle so what we have we understood from this lecture is the uh, second law the different statement of the second law of thermodynamics the clashes and the Kelvin statement the equivalence of this statement both that both the statements are equivalent to each other and finally we understood that uh, uh, reversible so something ideas about the reversible and irreversible processes uh, and so that is something about the second law of thermodynamics we will proceed more in the upcoming lectures thank you very much